Hello, welcome to my paint with me video. I am excited to share with you the process of painting sandy pearl using gouache. Before we get started, I want to mention that I just bought a beautiful washi tape which I used to mask off some areas of the paper before painting. It really helped me keeping the edges neat and tidy. As a kid, I loved watching Sandy Bell. I was captivated by her adventures and always dreamed of being a journalist and riding a camper van just like her. This final painting is a tribute to those cherished childhood memories. Before I start painting, first I prepare the paints. I use a few drops of watercolor ink to stain my watercolor paper or you can call it an underpainting. I love this step because it makes me feel like my painting is 10% done. It makes the painting experience less intimidating for me. I use blue ink for the sky area or the background and a pale pink ink for the main character. Next, I start mopping my shadow areas with watercolor. For this specific piece, I use permanent violet color. I use a watered down permanent orange red for the entire skin and another layer of thicker permanent orange red for the cheeks, nose and mouth. Then I use cadmium red for the hair tie and shirt. Cobalt blue for that part of the apron. And cadmium yellow medium for the entire hair section. I make my lines thicker with colored pencil because once we put gouache, our thin lines will disappear and I really need to be able to see my lines. I love to use this brilliant orange for the base of my skin tones. I usually mix it with white and I might mix it with brown if I need it to be darker for certain areas of the skin. I also might mix it with a bit of blue, purple or yellow if I need the skin to look cooler or warmer. I start by putting darker paint in the shadow areas, then work toward the lighter areas. This is because I mostly want a more blended look, especially when painting a form shadow where we need less contrast, or if we need our colors to look blended in general. In contrast, when we put light colors first, the darker color will look stronger. This is ideal if we need to emphasize the darkness of the shadow or when we want to paint a cast shadow where the contrast of light and dark is needed. Please don't get bored of me redefining my lines over and over again. I love bolder lines for my paintings. I'm starting to paint the apron, just like before, I paint with darker color first, then I add the lighter color. Same with the hair, we start from the shadow area of the hair, then we will move to the highlighted area. Sorry if it feels like I keep repeating the same stuff over and over again, but I remember there was a time when I loved to watch speed paintings to learn to paint, but a lot of them are silent videos. I wished that the creator will share some explanation to their painting process. It took me quite a long time to understand how to paint with watercolor and gouache. This is why I try to keep informing you guys how I process my paintings. 
even though it feels like I keep repeating the same stuff. Now I'm starting to paint the sky area. I use a light blue for the sky and even lighter blue for the cloud edges. I don't worry too much about the sky area. I just leave it so simple since I want a cartoonish look for the sky. I add white paint as a finishing touch. Now I start to paint the white part of her apron. I want the apron to have a purpley shadow so I start by painting the shadow area with light purple. Then I gradually add white to make the apron look whiter. If I need certain areas to be blended, then I will use a wet brush to blend softly. Now let's paint her shirt. This is by far the only area that we haven't painted with gouache yet. I used a violet paint at the beginning to give that area a darker look. Then I used flame red for the entire shirt section. I feel like I want her face to look more blended and opaque, so I add another layer of skin color to her face, then I add a rosy color to her cheeks and nose. I'm adding a lighter paint on the highlighted area of the face to help the cheeks and nose stand out. I did this multiple times, adding rosy color to the nose, cheeks and lips, then lighter color to the skin area. Up until I got my desired result. Now that the layer has dried, can you see how the rosy cheeks and nose stand out now? We couldn't see it when the paint was wet. This is gouache for you. Colors that look dark while wet will dry lighter and colors that look light when wet will dry darker. I'm still trying to get used to it myself. Now all I'm doing is enhancing opacity. If I feel like certain areas need more paint to be opaque, I will add more paint to those areas. But this is the same process as before. I make my lines look bolder, adding darker paint for darker areas first, then finishing with lighter paint for the highlighted areas, blending with a wet brush if needed, and I will add white paint at the very last for the teeth. Finally, it's time to remove the masking tape and this is the final result. 